What's up, you guys? It's Matt here. So I thought I would weigh in on the whole KuCoin situation. You know, I tend to do this, and I hope I'm not uh, shooting myself in the foot by doing this because you never really know 100% with different uh, cryptocurrencies because it seems like they can just lie and get people to feel good about certain things, but then all of a sudden be in a horrible situation. There are some people that are even pointing at Binance and saying that, you know, what they're doing is not really lining up with um, something that's a healthy exchange or healthy business would do. Um, but they're definitely pointing the finger at more KuCoin than anything, saying that KuCoin is next for uh, bankruptcy and, you know, a complete collapse and all of this. <clears throat> and I don't know, it just doesn't really line with me and what I'm seeing. And it seems like people are just trying to create a ton of negativity. And I think the reason why they're creating this negativity saying that KuCoin may be next is because it's something that comes up in the news that keeps a certain uh, paper or uh, online blog or online newspaper or whatever, um, you know, popular and, you know, in the news. Because if they're writing about it, then other people are writing about what they wrote about because they had so many visits. And now you have people on YouTube that are creating a lot about it. So it's a ton of back and forth. The same thing that happened with uh, CRO, and then they released the reserves. And it seems like a lot of people are kind of, uh, or at least most people are backing off of CRO or uh, crypto.com. <clears throat> now, there are still people that believe that's the case. They believe all exchanges are going down. But they only go down if really people start to give up on exchanges. If people give up completely on exchanges, well, yeah, you're going to have nobody invested on those platforms. They're not going to be able to pay their employees as well as, um, you know, with all their liabilities, they wouldn't be able to take their revenues and, um, you know, um, you know, work out the numbers, really. Their financial statements wouldn't work. So obviously let's talk about uh kucoin give my perspective on it and this is not financial advice i mean you guys can do whatever you want with your position it's definitely iffy uh as we look on to it because of you know what happened to other exchanges that we thought were okay and they sort of lied to us now we're requesting different information that makes us feel comfortable but not 100 percent comfortable so hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell for more videos like this one. Also, make sure you guys check out some of the links down below. It does help out the channel. Now, um, this is where it comes from. So we have an article here where it's like crypto community points the finger and talks about KuCoin Next, which they misspelled Next or Next Nexo or Nexo. Oh, never mind. KuCoin and Nexo. I thought they were saying KuCoin is next. Um perhaps to follow uh, BlockFi on Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And they get into some details talking about actually Binance and pointing the finger at Binance there. But I wanted to look at all of the different YouTube videos that are actually created uh, talking about BlockFi sues FTX, is KuCoin okay or KuCoin exchange okay? KuCoin in danger, KuCoin struggling, uh, is KuCoin bankrupt, uh, bankrupt or safe to buy Lunic and USTC? Seems like they combine way too much there. Um, KuCoin in trouble, you know, all of these different things that are here where people are like, you know, is KuCoin okay? Um, do we have to worry about our positions in KuCoin? Um, because of the APYs that they're offering. And it's not only coming from just new sources, but you're looking at any earn program. People are like, how are you, how do you have this much that you can earn um, without, um, you know, your investors being in danger? And it's, it's truly, it makes sense because you go into crypto earn and you would think, oh, well, you know what, 6%, uh, 6% on ADA, that's understandable. You can gain that. But then you start to look at 40% for Hydra, 18% uh, for um, GEEQ, right? You look at all these different percentages and you scroll down here, you're going to see 216% on USDT, uh, BTC 119%, ETH 109% um, with a dual investment. Um, you do have uh, Vision that's 60%, Mellows that's 101%. So the APYs are high and they're a little bit ridiculous at, at times um and it does get you to worry now why would they do that i don't understand why what's the reason behind why they can gain so much of an apy there um 
I'm used to gaining somewhere in between, uh, let's say, 2 to 5% APY. The fact that I'm gaining 6.8 over in KuCoin is definitely higher, and I was happy about that, and I'm still happy about that. Um, but KuCoin definitely has some high things that people would want to question. Now, when I think about exchanges, the things that people want to uh, look at is, do they have money to back what people are holding? And it seems like they do have money to back what people are holding. If you go into Coin Market Cap, which they so graciously added this extra piece to it, where you have the the exchanges and you look at different things here, and they have the reserves that are listed here. You can look at Binance and see that Binance has sixty five point two billion dollars in reserves, um, which is you know light years ahead of what their trading volume is in the last 24 hours. Um, but you can see that BUSD, all of these other things, but then you go into other exchanges and you're going to see that some don't have it. Kraken doesn't have it. Coinbase doesn't have it. They do have their financials public because they are a publicly traded company. Um, so that's the difference between uh, Coinbase and every other one that's there. But KuCoin, if you go into KuCoin, you're going to see they have the reserves posted. So this makes me feel a little bit stronger about uh, KuCoin itself. However, the APYs are still high and it still makes people question about that. Now, I'm not saying that everything's going to, um, you know, go under and that um, they're doing things the wrong way because I really don't understand um, how they're getting to those APYs. Uh, but the fact that they still have 2.5 billion, they're able to publish this. And the, the other thing that I wanted to mention is if this is an audited, um, you know, um, listing of reserves um, with your your assets there. And I don't know if this is audited. Um, I don't believe it says if it is audited. It just talks about, um, you know, KuCoin, uh, restricted countries, uh, what coins supported, uh, what coins are supported of KuCoin, uh, how much are KuCoin's fees, is it possible to leverage or margin trade KuCoin? So they break all this stuff down. Uh, when did KuCoin launch? Uh, who are the KuCoin founders? It doesn't go into like what's going on with this. And if it is audited, only wallets with uh, 100,000 USD balance are shown. Um, so that's anything above that, that point. The different markets, you're looking at uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, uh, all that stuff there. I do want to see, you know, some audited information. Information and data related to the holdings in a third-party wallet addresses uh, addresses are based on public third-party information. Uh, Coin Market Cap does not confirm or verify the accuracy or timeliness of such information and data. Um, Coin Market Cap shall have no responsibility or liability for uh, this public third-party information and data. Coin Market Cap <clears throat> shall have no duty to review, confirm, verify, or otherwise uh, perform any inquiry or investigation as to the the completeness or accuracy, uh, I feel like that's that's not right. I understand they want to remove liability uh, from their own platform, but if, if they're going to be posting this, yes, this is pub this is public information from a third party, and it's not one hundred percent audited. Um, unless you can find a way to find that information to get the audited numbers. But either way, I mean, this makes me feel a little bit better. It still uh, makes me think that it could be, um, you know, doctored, I guess, um, could be falsified and might not be real. Um, but it does make me feel a little bit better with 2.5 billion, especially, you know, seeing where they are. Um, you know, they're listed fifth with their... Um, their exchange, how much volume they have, which is $500 million in volume on their exchange with all of their um, you know, assets shown. So I guess what you need to do is um, make sure you take it day by day, understand the information. I'm not going to tell anybody that they should get off the platform or stay on the platform um, because you never know what could happen. And that's why we need all this information. But it does make me feel a little bit better um, what does make me feel a little bit worse than what I felt before was just reading that information, that little blurb about the fact that you are not verifying, you're not confirming um, if all the information is 100% accurate, you know? Um, so anyways, guys, hit the like button and the subscribe button. Let me know where you land on this whole KuCoin situation. I don't believe that they're going bankrupt. It does sort of concern me with the whole 100%, um, 200% APY or APR. Um, 
But yeah, we'll have to dig into that a little bit more in the future. And if anybody has a breakdown of like how they get to that 16, uh, 216% without me having to go in and research it, um, let me know in the comment section. Uh, but hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell for more videos like this one. I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.